Hey everyone, Carl Larson here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how to add an extra bonus physical HDMI port to your ATEM mini switcher. That's right, there is a secret way to add an extra physical port to your ATEM mini switcher. Now you don't need to tear the thing apart, There's, we're not soldering anything today, but dollar for dollar, these little switchers are just amazing. The ATEM mini switchers are everywhere, and they're great at what they do for small to medium sized productions. Sure, there's larger, better, bigger, more capable switchers out there, but in places where we're thinking about using an ATEM mini switcher, we usually have a couple sources and a couple destinations. But in my opinion, we need at least three outputs to really have a workable live production. So here's what I mean. I need to use one of those physical outputs. This switcher has two. I need one of those physical outputs for the multi-view so I can see what I'm doing. I need to see all the sources coming in, and then I need to see what's on the air, and then what my outputs are doing. So that's what I have here. I have camera one, camera two, my graphics source, program, and then my output one and output two. And then I can see my audio as well. Then I need to get that signal out of the switcher and to its final destination. That's gonna be program. So now I've used up my two physical outputs. That's all I have. Multi-viewer, program. But there is one more port on the back of the switcher that isn't intended to be used for physical connections. And that's the USB-C port on the back, which is always a dedicated program output. There's no way to change that as far as I know, but output one and output two on the ATEM switcher itself can be assigned to anything you want. So if we can figure out a way to get the USB-C connection to turn into an HDMI connection, a physical HDMI connection, then we can use our other two outputs so that we have program, multi-view, and one auxiliary output left so that we can have more options in our routing and outputs. So first, let's discuss why I think you need three outputs. One for the multi-view, one for program, and one for an aux output. Oftentimes in small to medium sized gatherings, we're not doing iMag on the screens. We're not cutting cameras to screens, either because the room is physically small enough where you don't need to see cameras on screens, or it just doesn't fit the culture or mood of the gathering. It's just unnecessary. It can feel more than what's really required. But we do oftentimes, almost always, need lyrics on the screen or graphics, graphic source on the screen. Unless we wanna record our graphic source, put it on program to get it out of the switcher, we need that third output so that we can put cameras on our live stream or a recording and still route graphics to where they need to go on the screens in the front of the room oftentimes. So how are we gonna get that extra physical port? Well, we're gonna get there by using the USB-C port on the back of the switcher. Now, that you can do a lot through the USB-C port. You can control the ATEM software directly, you can use it as a webcam, or you can use it for ISO recording. And since there's two of them, you can actually use them for multiple things. Now, when I'm recording this video, I'm actually recording ISO recording to a hard drive, a little SSD in the back here, and I wanna use the other port as a webcam. I'm gonna take that and convert that into an HDMI signal. But my first thought of how am I gonna get this extra physical port didn't use the USB-C port at all. Instead, it was gonna use the ethernet port and the ATEM streaming bridge. The idea there was the ethernet sends out a program feed as well. And so the program feed is gonna go in the ethernet port and then it's gonna go through the streaming bridge and it's gonna give me SDI or HDMI out. Now, normally this device is used to connect remote viewers or send a signal over the internet. But in my case, I literally just want a one foot connection to here and get a physical output. But the one major problem with this is there's just too much delay in the device. Even using a local network, just straight into here, there's about a three quarter second delay on the output here, which is fine if you're going all the way across the internet. But if you're gonna be plugging this into monitors, maybe throughout your building, but still be able to hear what's going on in the main room, it's gonna be pretty out of sync and it's gonna be jarring. So we don't want that. Another option that I explored was with the USB-C port. Knowing that it's a webcam, I thought, huh, maybe I can just bring that into my computer and then spit that webcam back out at HDMI port. There's a number of ways to accomplish this, but I don't like the idea of running my program signal through a computer to get that back out. And I don't like the idea of what if the laptop crashes? It seems like a lot is riding on making my laptop right. So that's where I discovered this little guy, the Ozbot UVC to HDMI converter. Now it's just a simple thing. It's probably a little Raspberry Pi piece of dedicated hardware in here, but all it does is it takes the webcam in here, power on this side, and spits out an HDMI signal. And 
it actually works. So let's check it out. So on the switcher itself, I have the webcam out and I'm just gonna plug that in there. And then I'm going to plug in the power. So this is just standard USB-C. It takes a little bit more power than say a phone charger, but uh, just plug that in and then HDMI to my monitor. So now, make it look pretty. I've got HDMI going through here to the box. We should see it light up here. Get a logo. We see we have audio going to the, the box. And there we are. So we're getting program over there. And just to prove that it's program, I'm gonna dissolve. We see that, I'm gonna dissolve. We see the overhead and back to camera one. So we have audio, we have video, and it looks great. It's pretty much the exact copy of my program monitor that I'm seeing up front. Now, the real question is how much delay does this box induce? I was worried about even recommending it because normally turning the webcam into an HDMI, there's gonna be a lot of latency. And there is a little latency, but it's not that bad. Let me show you. So going over to Premiere, I have a timeline that has time code in it. I'm just gonna start this here at the beginning, press play and take that to air everywhere. Now, I'm gonna pause the video and we're gonna see how much of a delay there is in between the two. So you see the Ozbot box is only a few frames off of what program is. And it's just taking the web feed and turning it into HDMI. And then we can send that anywhere. We can send that through a distribution amplifier. We can do anything. But the really, really great thing with this setup is now I'm using USB-C for my program going here. I have my multi-view and I can switch. So on program, I'm gonna send on my aux output here, on aux one, output one, I'm gonna send just the graphics. And on program, now I can do whatever I want. I can dissolve to my camera here, I can go to the overhead, and you can see my output is not changing. So I have the multi-view, my output that everyone sees in the room, and I can still be doing what I need to do on the recording or on the stream. So in my opinion, this is a fantastic way of adding just a little more functionality to the switcher that is so close to being great for live events. One other thing to note about the Ozbot that we need to pay attention to is that it outputs 108060. Even though I'm giving it 108024 as my source, it converts it to 108060. So you need to be mindful of that if frame rates are a concern in your workflow. So in conclusion, it's not a perfect solution, but it really does help expand the capabilities of this little switcher to make it even more powerful than it already is. If you're looking for more live production tips and tricks like what you've seen today, check out our website at pavement.media. There we have a full course called the Fundamentals of Live Production, where we teach the fundamentals of live production, things that everyone needs to know regardless of the equipment that they're using, things that are applicable to every team of any size, fundamentals that do not change over time. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. And if you wanna see a free lesson, just go over to our website, sign up for the free lesson, and you can have access to the course immediately. So again, thanks for watching. I'm Carl Larson. I love doing this with you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.